Welcome to Crawl Space. I'm Tim here today with Lance. Lance, how are you today? I am doing fantastic today, Tim. In my previous life, I don't know, I might have been doing fantastic, but currently right now in this life, I'm doing fantastic. In this life, Tim, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I do love this topic, Lance. This is the topic of reincarnation today. We are getting deep into it with our guest, Christy Arnhart, who brought us some research and we went through it. You know, tried to play devil's advocate with this idea. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope we're open minded enough to handle this conversation. And you know, I have a feeling that this isn't going to be the last time we talk about reincarnation with Christy. I feel like we just scratched the surface of it. I didn't really know a lot about it. Didn't know that I was going to be interested in it until we started talking about it. And since this conversation, looked into it a little bit more. So I really want to get her back on to go a little bit deeper into more stories, more theories, and more cultural influences. And let us know what you think of this episode on social media. Follow us at Crawl Space Podcast or Crawl Space Pod. And if you haven't done so yet, feel free to swing on over and give Crawl Space Podcast a good rating, maybe a good review. And Tim, if people wanted to hear this episode or any of the other episodes without the ads, where would you suggest they swing on over to? Well, Crawl Space Premium is now available on Apple Podcasts. You can sign up there. It's $4.99 a month. You get ad-free episodes, early releases, and our weekly bonus show. And if you're not an Apple user, you can go to crawlspace.supportingcast.fm and sign up for the same product there. And we're going to break real quick for a commercial, and we will be right back with Christy Arnhart and Stories of Reincarnation. Thanks to our sponsors, and now we're back to the program. Christy Arnhart, welcome back to the podcast. How are you today? I'm great. How are you guys doing? We're doing fantastic today, and it is always a delight to have you on the show because you always bring these topics that we don't typically cover. And this topic today is something you're interested in. I don't know how interested in I was until I saw all of the material that you came up with. It's a controversial one. You're bringing some controversy to the table today, which we appreciate. Oh, well, good. Good. I can't wait to fight this one out then. <laughs> <laughs> For those who aren't watching, she just rubbed her hands together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, this one's one that's always interested me too, especially when it's coming from children. Yes. Okay, so today we are talking about reincarnation. This is sort of a, maybe it's fair to call it a cultural phenomenon or maybe even a spiritual phenomenon. It seems like most cultures have stories of reincarnation. Is that right? That is. Yeah. I, nearly every culture I looked at has some form of reincarnation in it. Well, today we're going to try to figure out whether it's true or whether it's ballyhoo. So at the very end of this, we'll make that decision. That'll forever stand. <laughs> what, is, what does the winner get though? I mean, come on guys. Eternal life. <laughs> Before we get into it, I'm just curious, Christy, how did you find that this was an interest of yours? And you said, especially when it involves children. So, mm -hmm. well, you know, anything paranormal, I find interesting. And to me, this falls under that umbrella. You know, you get adults who have therapy, things like that. They can start remembering past lives and they spread it out there. But what about children? When children are just starting to talk and they're talking about things that they shouldn't know about. A past life, you know, that they have experience in, or even family members that they already know that they've never met yet because they are a deceased family member. That really, really interested me. The idea that somebody lived a life died maybe suddenly and then is now that spirit is now in another body is an interesting idea some of these stories that we're going to talk about today have to do with memories that the second person has of their first life is that fair to say yes all of these i believe are fairly recent it's not like the children came up and they were, you know, this the per they were reincarnated from someone hundreds of years ago. It was always something that could be tracked down and looked at. For me, these are really the interesting ones. And, you know, it makes sense if you think about it, because your soul is a source of energy. It just doesn't make any sense to me that once our run here is done and that's it. No, that energy's got to go somewhere. It has to do something. So... Why not come back? Try to get it right that time. Yeah, I want to get into that a bit more later and, and sort of theories and everything about that and about purpose, if this is to be believed. Let's go through this first uh, story, this story of Luke Ruhlman. This kid 
unfortunately spooked his parents like you wouldn't believe. He started at about two years old claiming that he was a woman who used to be named Pam. Now, the family, they didn't know anybody named Pam. Nobody in the family had that name. They were real surprised by it. As time went on, he started to elaborate more. He turned to his mother one day. He said, well, I used to be, but I died and I went up to heaven. I saw God and then eventually God pushed me back down and I was a baby and you named me Luke. The details really started to hit the family hard. He's telling his family that he traveled on a train to Chicago. But the family lives in Cincinnati, Ohio. They've never been to Chicago. They're like, why is he insisting he rode a train there? He used to say, when I was a girl, I had black hair. Or he'd say, I used to have earrings like that when I was a girl. The mother finally felt like she had enough information to start looking into his claims to see if a person like this really existed. And what she came up with is that a woman named Pam Robinson, who was one of 19 people killed in a fire at Chicago's Paxton Hotel in 1993, they were actually able to connect with her family and talk to them. They were brought on to The Ghost Inside My Child, which is, I don't know if you guys have heard of that. I have saw the show before, but it's not one that I, I watch very often. When they filmed that show, they set Luke down and they showed him a full page of pictures with different African-American women on it in their 30s. One of them was Pam Robinson. First person he picks out of the pictures is Pam. They were able to contact the family and verify some of these details. I don't believe that Pam's family really wanted to have much to do with the discussion. So I don't think Pam's family appeared in the episode. The Ruhlmans say that they spoke with Pam's family? Yes, the mother Erica said that she spoke with them. Yeah, because I guess they declined to comment on the story. I did watch this episode. It's weird to me that these articles, and if you Google Luke Ruhlman, you'll see several of them written in 2022, but this episode originally aired in 2015 on The Ghost Inside My Child, which is a TV show that is like very specific. Now, I couldn't find anything about this kid now because he should be like 12. Everything you find about him is just about this story and is about he's five. And, you know, I was thinking that he was still five until I looked into it and realized that the show aired before. This kid isn't available on Instagram. He's not on Facebook. I don't know. I don't know about this. Did they change his name? Was that part of this? If it was, I didn't see that anywhere. I got I, No, I didn't really get a feeling that that's what had happened. And it wasn't stated in any articles either. That's very interesting. The kid, I have to say, in the episode, you know, you kind of believe him in the episode. The mom, you believe. The dad doesn't want really seem to want anything to do with this either and thinks it's a bad idea that they showed their son the picture of Pam. But by the end of the episode, he kind of came around. It was like, all right, maybe. <laughs> so I don't know what any of that tells us other than... Like, like, there's a lot of media that has covered this story, but nothing that I've seen from actually, like, the actual present. So is this suggestive of a hoax that the parents wanted to give it some traction? And then once it got the traction, they realized like, ooh, damn, like this is probably not going to turn out the way we wanted it to turn out. That's what I wondered as well. I know that this show Ghost Inside My Child only made it two seasons. I mean, you imagine there's sort of a finite amount of people that you can have on your show when it's when it's about that. But in their episode post about this episode back in 2015, it says underneath the post, it says just a friendly reminder to anyone on here who might be interested in being on the show. We are currently casting for a special. <laughs> and so it goes on. If you if you know anyone who would like to share their story with us, please send us a DM to the Facebook page. Just saying like that that opens the door for someone to fake this. Yeah, it does. It's unfortunate that there isn't anything beyond that period of time. There was no follow-up book. If the parents were going to do something, I don't want to say a hoax. It doesn't really, like, that episode doesn't feel deliberately, like, hoaxed to me. So I don't want to say that the parents are doing this as a hoax. But if this was done to capitalize on the reincarnation topic and they used their son because maybe their son said something offhanded, you know, maybe their son did make that comment. Maybe he saw something on TV and then took that with him and made that comment. And then they were like, wait a sec, there's that show. There's nothing after that, though. I was disappointed to see that there wasn't 
some sort of book or something. You have to keep in mind, too, if this was something that he was saying organically on his own and he wasn't being fed on purpose or inadvertently, he's probably grown out of this and forgotten most of it by now. That is what I would think. Yeah, because he was five then. And so now he'd be at least uh, like, like 12. So yeah, you're probably right. I mean, this is likely something that a 12 year old is not thinking of regularly. So I don't know. I would call this one inconclusive in my mind, uh, leaning closer towards hoax just because there's it, it's a weird thing with the time element. These articles don't seem to um, go into where he is today. I, I can't I can't find any proof that he's even a real person. <laughs> <laughs> Early AI. Uh, there you go. <laughs> They just deep faked him into the article, that's it, and into the show. It is interesting that he did pick the right woman when shown the pictures. Was that, like, creatively edited? As people who have been on TV shows that investigate, it could be some some fudgery. Liberties. There were natural liberties that were taken in the Disappearance of Maura Murray television show that I'm sort of referring to here, where the company put out these coordinates that were anonymously emailed to us, but they put not the real coordinates because someone could go to those real coordinates and get hurt, and then the production company is liable, you know, so... There are certain protections that they will take in cases like that. Yeah, that's understandable. I do want to move on to the next story that we have, but there's one thing that is bugging me a little bit is that Pam died in 1993 in Chicago. And so many years later, this happened to Luke. So what was it in the meantime that was happening if were to consider that reincarnation might be real, what happened in the meantime there? Did Pam try to enter other bodies? Was her energy existing until she came across Luke, you know, who was vibrating on the same level? Me personally, I always felt like you were waiting to go into that next body and that there was some kind of in-between that you could exist in until that body was ready for you. Maybe I've just watched too much TV, but that's the way I've always thought of it. I hope that's true. As far as the story goes, Luke says that he was, I guess, in heaven and God pushed me back down and I was a baby and you named me Luke. So that's kind of all that they say in that story about where Pam was. Fair question, because what, that'd be 20 years or whatever on deck, I guess. This is a real fascinating story. The more we pick it apart, we're bringing in God. You know, how is Luke understanding that this is God? Unless you just understand when you're in that place. I just don't believe that no matter how hard you try, there are going to be details that get through to your kid. This interested me enough that when my niece was able to start talking and whatnot, I'd slip in every now and again. I'd be like, hey, you remember before mommy? You remember what that was like? You know, stuff like that (laughs) to see what kind of answer she would give me. And it's... It's hard not to lead them by just asking a question. Unfortunately, she had no memories of past life. Well, she's nine now. So if they start coming up, I'm going to (laughs) worry. Has anyone here had a memory that you can't explain or that you think might be in a different time? Or maybe was anybody ever meditating and you saw something? I mean, I never had any kind of a dream like that. I have two kids too. And, uh, you know, you do kind of wait for them to say something weird or something like that. Because trust me, I would love to have (laughs) delved into a mystery like this if they said something weird. I mean, there are times where it's like, oh, that's beyond her years to say that. Like, I don't know where she got that. I never heard, I never used that phrase or heard that expression used around her. So I don't know where that came from. It's never led me down a, a rabbit hole like this. But we've all had deja vu. Yeah. Yes. Deja vu. Thanks to the Mandela effect, I know how badly my brain works now. I haven't ever had any kind of past life or dream or anything that I was anyone else. I'm always just me. And that's all you need to be, Christy. <laughs> That's all I can take right now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, deja vu is a weird feeling, right? I mean, it's really hard to describe. Actually, my eight-year-old daughter asked me what it was uh, recently, and it was really hard to describe. And I was like, you know it when you feel it, but it's really not something that's easily describable. You feel like you've been there before, though. And there's a physical feeling, too, that kind of washes over you. Have you ever had deja vu to the point where you thought you were going to pass out or it made you dizzy? No. No, I don't think so. You? Recently, yeah. Well, tell us about this. There's really not a lot to tell. I think we were on an interview. I think it was Tim, Jen, and I were doing like an episode of the subservice and I got this like wave of deja vu and I had to like almost like kind of shut my eyes and refocus. Didn't happen for a long duration, maybe 20 seconds. 
it kind of made me like shaky. Well, in fairness, we've recorded like a hundred episodes <laughs> very similar <laughs> to yeah. uh, every <laughs> subservice. Not a shock. Not a shock that that's where it happened. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into this second story. Let's go back in time. Yeah, a little bit more um, age to it. To me, this one has even less evidence than the first one, but I think it's my favorite. In 1946 and then in 1951, daughters Joanna and Jacqueline were born to a happy Catholic family who lived in the market town of Hexham in England. Well, let me stop you there. Hexham does not sound like a happy place. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they've got a, an incident that happened there. The Hexham incident. The Hexham heads were found there. Ooh, get into that for two minutes. Yeah, the it's a pair of small stone heads. They're about six centimeters high. They found them in 1971 in Hexham. The heads became associated with alleged paranormal phenomena, and their exact origin is a point of controversy. Okay, this is what you get, folks. Bottles getting thrown across the room, and I guess whoever had them in their possession experienced the supernatural part of it. Google that as you listen to this. Oh, these are creepy. Ugh. Yuck. And I see them sometimes referred to as Celtic heads too but you know their origins are controversial who knows if that's actually celtic so tell us about these twins well parents florence and john pollock ran a milk delivery business and they already had four sons when two daughters arrived while the parents were working the girls were taken care of by their grandmother they'd play dress up games of imagination you know the things you do with your grandmother unfortunately on may 5th of 1957 tragedy struck on the way to church with a friend a car coming toward them veered off the road and smashed into them the girls died at the scene and the friend that had been with them anthony died en route to the hospital joanne was 11 when she died and jacqueline was just six as if that's not sad enough the woman who actually hit them her name was marjorie Wynn. She'd been found to be intoxicated after overdosing on aspirin and the epilepsy medication phenobarbitone. The woman's children had been taken away from her, and after attempting to take her own life, she was later committed to a psychiatric hospital. She didn't end up taking her own life. She took three others and lived through it. That must, after losing her kids, and oh, that was all just so sad. You know, despite that, it wasn't long. Before the mother was pregnant again, on October 4th of 1958, she gave birth to two twin girls, Jillian and Jennifer. Before you continue, I mm -hmm. just want to give a shout out to Florence for birthing eight children, including twins, in the 50s. It's a miracle. Yeah, I don't want to think about that. That's too much for my brain. One of them has to come out as a reincarnation. <laughs> Those are the odds, right? Yeah. It was almost like from the beginning, their dad, John felt that something was going to happen. Even in the beginning, he thought his wife was going to have twins. The midwife kept telling him, no, I only hear one heartbeat. He's like, no, I think they're twins. And boom, they have twins. Now, they said they had no history of them in the family. So I don't know if he had that feeling or if they just got lucky, but they sure did. Really interesting that John was the one who said, I have a feeling that th these are twins. And Florence wasn't like, this feels a lot different than the six before. Yeah. Interesting. Did you consider that the one heartbeat was their heart beating at the same time? That's what I thought. Yeah, interesting. That's just precious. I loved that. Now, for some reason, John feared that the death of his first two daughters was a punishment from God because... All through his childhood, he had always been fascinated in reincarnation, but his family's devout Catholic, so that was not acceptable, and he just thought God was punishing him, which is so sad. Now, I don't want uh, anyone to take offense to this. I'm not talking about anyone who's listening uh, or throwing stones at anybody's faith. Every, everyone has their right to their own faith, but... Did you get enough disclaimers out of the way? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If you're throwing God into this, like already like obviously this family went through a tragedy he's maybe searching for meaning um i don't think he, it's possible to will a person into existence well that's all we'll, we'll argue about that a different day <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know i just i maybe he's he's preconditioned to believe something like this also uh, with having dealt with such a horrible tragedy maybe that makes dealing with that a bit easier i would have to agree there that's a very good possibility and i thought about that when i researched this you know he already felt like they were twins 
he already believed in reincarnation. It's not a big leap for him to think maybe my girls have been brought back to me. In the Catholic faith, you do not believe in reincarnation? In the Christian faith, period. You don't. And that was always something that was hard for me, too. My family are missionary Baptist, and they have very strong beliefs about this, and it's that it does not exist. So Catholicism is saying that this can't be true. Now I'm starting to think that it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good instinct. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, and I can say that because I was raised Catholic, and I don't really claim to be any religion anymore. But come on, don't don't be closed minded to it. Don't be completely closed off. Well, yeah, you can't knock out all those possibilities. And wouldn't the world be boring? I think it would. Well, it's not a sin to believe that reincarnation is a possibility. So to, you know, like no. let's let's take it easy, uh, <laughs> Christianity. Let's take it easy on the God judgment. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the same faith where a woman got pregnant when she was a virgin? Yes. So you think we'd be more open-minded to this kind of thing. A little more open-minded to possibilities of fantastical things. (laughs) We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. And a thank you to our sponsors. Back to the program. Now, I did... Google the Pollock sisters and hoax really tried to sort of shoot holes in this one. And I, I can't, I mean, there, there are a lot of articles that have a lot of the same information. I didn't try to find them today if they were alive or anything. I did not find any stories out there trying to debunk this story. Well, that's a first. Maybe I didn't look hard enough, but <laughs> you know, you'd think with so much time that's gone by, there have been some debunkers who came along, but I haven't I didn't find one. And you can still find pictures of them, at least middle-aged, and they're standing there with pictures of their sisters that passed away. This is something that kept up with them throughout their childhood, unlike Luke, or unlike how it has seemed for him. The evidence that they have, which, of course, we don't have pictures or anything of that today. All we have are what they're telling us. But evidently, they had birthmarks in the same places as their deceased sisters. Some scars were represented as birthmarks as well. So any of those matched up with the sisters that had passed away. They knew what each sister, almost as if one was one sister and one was the other. They knew what their reincarnated part loved, toys, music, games. They could go to their grandmother's house and pick out specific toys that they played with in their other life, as well as saying, oh, I got this at Christmas from so-and-so and this, and, you know, they should have no idea where any of these things came from. At one point, it started to get stressful for the family. There was just too much in town that was a reminder to everybody. So they decided to move 30 miles away, give the kids a new place to settle in, see if maybe some of this past life stuff would lessen up. But, you know, they ended up having to move back because the girls remembered in their past life going to this town and they could point out, oh, that church has, you know, a playground in the back. And we went here and did this before and it really didn't help the stress or anything. So they ended up moving back. Caused a lot of contention in the family too. Mm, How so? Well, the wife was a complete devout Catholic. And she would not accept any of this in any way, but she could see what her husband was talking about. So it created a crisis of faith on her part. It created problems in their marriage, sadly. That's crazy to me that she could be married to the same person and have eight children with them, including two that died tragically. Who cares if he believes that these two are the reincarnation of the ones that died in the accident? Like, it's crazy to me that someone's faith would trump that relationship and that that belief that, well, maybe these two have been reincarnated. It's not really doing any harm, right? No, I can't see what harm it does. Like the only harm it does is when the other when someone else challenges it and then it becomes contentious. Well, I think it could hurt a family's reputation, could be uh, quite embarrassing for one member of the family, potentially. I can see that, especially if they're all Catholic and that's not within their belief system. Now, she did fight it for years, but she gave in eventually. I mean, there's just too many things that she was seeing. One day, the girls are sitting there playing, and they reenacted the accident that killed them, just like they were the two sisters in the car. And that was the final straw for her. She was like, nobody has described this accident to these children. They should not know what's going on. So she finally did give in, but it took her a while. Okay, so this is this is where I'm I'm starting to get to wonder about this, though. These kids just totally obsessed with their sisters like they're constantly talking about it and thinking about it oh there's a playground behind the church or are they normal kids at times too and if 
they are, then I'm sure there are moments where you wouldn't know whether they're being normal or sort of interacting with their past selves. You wouldn't say that is something weird necessarily, you know, unless it's happening often. I don't know. I guess what I'm getting at is I, I'm wondering if someone in the family talked about it a lot. The parents made it a point, they say, not to talk about the other daughters or anything they had been through. They said that it was too hard for them even then to deal with on a constant basis. Now, I know no matter how hard you try, some things are going to get through. No, they made it a point not to bring these things up. And the impression that I got from it is not like these other girls and they knew it and they're just living in a new body. It was, you know, two normal kids who would break out into a game they shouldn't know or mention something they shouldn't know and freak everybody out. Okay, a couple more points. They had siblings, so maybe the siblings were doing the talking about the situation. And also their DNA is going to be very similar to the uh, the sisters who died. I mean, maybe a certain toy is naturally going to be your favorite toy if you're... Your genes are very similar to the, the sister or, or sibling that came before. I don't know enough about genes to argue that. <laughs> I seriously don't. But it would make sense. I mean, you're within the same family, the same environment. I wonder if this is some sort of transcendent version of when twins will feel the other one's pain. Right. Yeah, there are stories about that. Twins sort of knowing what's going on in their other's life. You know, maybe that's another one to do a deep dive on to see if there's some real <laughs> truth to that. I've got twins in my family and I can say, yeah, I mean, there are times they don't have to talk. Yeah, they don't have, you know, they just know what's going on. I, I, I'd like to sit down and Ask them about some unusual times they've had too. I bet they've got stories. Okay, so th so that one I think is definitely possible. But being so long ago, you know, it, I don't know. Well, it's hard to prove or disprove because of that. It is, yeah, and and there was no documentary or you know about it that I've seen, so uh, hard to prove or disprove. Now, one thing that I did kind of skim over were all of the different reincarnation stories that come out of India. It's such an intrinsic part of their life. You get stories all the time. One of the ones that I read about was a little boy named Uttar Pradesh. And he just came right out and he was like, hey, you know, I died eight years ago. <laughs> he was able to take his family back to the town that he lived in, told who he was, how he died. There were people there that he would walk up to and refer to them by, you know, uh, familiar names that they that they shouldn't know, that people that he did not know at all. And he would say, do you remember me? We blah, blah, blah. And they'd be like, yes, I do remember this. And that happens a lot in stories coming out of India. I don't think the boy has actually been named. I think that is the name of the village, that Uttar Pradesh. Yeah, that's the district. Yeah, yeah, his dad was named, but I don't think the actual boy was. The The boy who died in 2013, drowned in a canal, is mentioned by name. That's the part that I'm a bit skeptical about with this story. I get this a lot when I look into the stories from India. You might get a name, you might not. There's necess not necessarily any hard evidence to it. It's just they were able to take us here, and they knew this person and that. And I'm sure that there are stories that they have totally verified, and I just didn't happen onto one of those. I mean, in their faith, they don't have to justify it or verify it. So I can see why there's not as much evidence of it in what I'm finding as compared to the other articles. I think the timing of this, like, confuses me. So the boy who drowned was 13. Mm -hmm. He drowned when he was 13, and the boy who said he died, he said he died eight years ago. So I'm confused on the timing. How old was the, is the boy? I think the boy is eight. Yes. When he was born is when the other kid died. Yes, yes. For this case, but that wasn't the case with Luke and Pam. Right. In this case, the 13-year-old boy drowns. His soul passes on to the boy who's featured in the article. And when the kid turns eight, he says, when I was born eight years ago, I was actually born from this other person. Or I lived this other person's life. Yeah, that's the way I read it. He was even able to point out his sister from that past life. Which, you know, if he's seen a picture of the boy who he thinks he is, maybe the, the sister looks a bit like the deceased boy. They took him to his old school and his teachers asked him questions that the other boy should have been able to answer. He answered all of them correctly. And that was a 13-year-old boy and he's eight. 
Christy, consider me Fox Mulder because I want to believe. <laughs> <laughs> consider me Dana Scully because I, I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know who that makes me, so. And we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors. And now we're back to the program. Why would you want to make something like this up? Especially if it's a part of your life and your religion, it's expected. Well, I guess there could be all kinds of societal stresses. And... I don't know. I'm also a bit dubious about this photo that's used, too. I don't think this is the kid that's associated with the story. I don't know why I feel that way, but I just don't. It looks like a generic photo. Searching it on like reverse Google image search it actually is not coming up with any results which doesn't make any sense see when i looked it up it's come up with two articles one of them is the one from india today the other one it may just be a reprint yeah it looks like it is yeah it seems like a lot of them are like that and the more places that the original article is posted to the more real that it is we kind of just went through this with guest jw Oker in talking about cryptids because in trying to trace back the legends of cryptids you know it seems like the goal of people to get like a loch ness monster type story like the initial goal is get it in print somewhere because then it's parroted or it's potentially forwarded out and reprinted and reprinted and then all of a sudden it's real that is true so i don't know i don't know about this one but i'm skeptical the door's still open well now you're dana scully <laughs> <laughs> i'm both <laughs> aren't we all now another thing that i found really interesting is that native american tribes there were a lot of native american children that have come forward with past lives and they're from all different walks of life when i researched it it looked like we really started getting cases of this written down in i believe it was the 1800s with missionaries that would come over and you know talking with them trying to get them to change their beliefs to christianity and whatnot these stories started coming up but i don't think that they really started writing them down until the 1800s and these are the same stories the first one that i ran across is tale of alan gamble and he was someone that was supposed to be the reincarnation of his father's deceased brother. So he was his uncle. And evidently the boy was able to give him details. Alan was even born with birthmarks that again matched his uncle. He would have the same types of illnesses and injuries that his uncle had. It's just so unusual. Uh, there's just a whole list. I just didn't even do a very big search. And you just get case after case. And it's always the same, just like these others. Either it comes to them in a dream and they remember who they were, or it comes to a, a relative, and then everyone starts to see the similarities and whatnot. But, you know, they're very spiritual people, and believing that everything's connected, not a stretch for reincarnation to be a thing. I mean, I'm not trying to persuade one way or the other. There does seem to be some sort of obvious connection in our environment. Living things will, will die and decompose into the earth and give life to something else. You don't even have to be spiritual or not to know that that's something that happens. Even if you're talking about leaves that fall from a tree, at one point they were alive and they've decomposed and that provides nutrients to the soil to give life to something else that'll grow. So why that ends with us? Why or why not? The law of conservation of energy says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed or transferred from one form to another. And if you believe in a soul or that your body has energy that's connected to what's around you, that would just seem like a given. It's an interesting phrase to use or an interesting moniker to identify that as somebody's soul, because immediately most people will go to a religious angle there. But a soul could be something beyond religious identification. Yes, definitely. Well, there was a scientist who did try to measure how much the soul weighed back in the early 1900s, Duncan McDougall. Interesting experiments. Actually, he's from uh, Massachusetts, too, our uh, neck of the woods. Yeah, this is not something that you hear about very often. He hypothesized that souls have a physical weight, and he wanted to measure the mass that a human loses when their soul departs its body. So what he ended up doing was he took six patients and kept them around until they hit their moment of death. And then he put them on these great big scales for them to pass away. When they did, he recorded the weight. 
Now, he says that the body lost 21 grams when the soul exited. That's from one patient. Yes, that was just one of them. Yeah, a a different patient showed 28 grams lost, and a, a fourth case showed 10 grams lost. So it seems like, I don't know where he's gotten the number 21 and made it like it's definitive. It seems not consistent at best. Isn't it gas leaving your body? A lot of people argued that because your body will expand and contract. You lose fluids, everything evacuates, things like that. People really try to pick this one apart because they said there weren't enough fail-safe measures to watch it to make sure everything was happening the way that it should. It was good for him, but not the scientific community. And I don't know that anyone has ever tried to measure it again, but it always stuck with me, 21 grams. No, I think it's great. I think you're right in in that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. I, I like that. This is where I start to get into the idea of reincarnation, to be honest. But I don't know about this experiment, but I do like the the points about energy, sort of rebirth and things like that. I'm convinced there's a lot going on in this in this place that we don't have explanations for right now. You know, and maybe maybe some of them we will in the future. I'm not so sure about reincarnation, but again, I really want to believe. Well, and here's another possibility. What if they're not the same souls being reincarnated, but people who are able to tap in to the Akashic field, the Akashic records. Because, you know, those are supposed to be a record of everything that's ever happened throughout history, every person, everything. And if you're able to, you know, tap into this like Edgar Cayce was, you can see events, things that are forgotten, past lives. But that's a whole other argument. I feel like there's a joke in there somewhere that I'm just No, get no, there's not. <laughs> I feel like there was potential to make a joke, though. <laughs> Probably. Like if you just tap into every episode we've ever done for a podcast, you'd get the answers to everything. (laughs) (laughs) That would be nice. Wow. I'm not sure we solved this mystery here today, but maybe no one can solve it. Not until we all cross that bridge for ourselves. Very true. And maybe we come right back across it. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. (laughs) 